Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today I decided that we're gonna have to remove the transmission out of the 08 Nissan Altima. And I'm getting myself set up because the ground is uneven and I want the hoist to work. And that give me a hard time when I move it. I ended up getting some board put it underneath and hopefully that will help with the hoist when it's time to put it in place and go forward, go back, move it from side to side. Yep, transmission gotta come out. I'm done with this. I worked on it and it made it improve the transmission and it was working nice, but now it broke down. I think something broke inside internally, like um, the actuators or maybe the steel belt just gave out this thing is not running at all it's not making noises or anything just um excessive extreme chatter it just you put it in gear and it just wants to buck it bucks like extreme it vibrates like crazy so i'm done and my attempt is to remove the transmission from the top not from the bottom I'm going to jack it up so that I can remove the wheels and the axles. But um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I do this coming from the top. Okay, so the first step is loosen up the lug nuts while it's on the ground. And then I'm going to jack it up, remove the wheels from both sides. And um, yeah, that's the first step. Let's get it. Okay, guys, I got the wheels off. Now the plan is the next step to remove these two bolts so that I can swing the spindle this forward. Also remove this nut, remove this cotter pin. Cotter pin first and nut. And hopefully this thing moves forward, allowing the steer ax, the CV joint to come out. I don't know if I'm gonna need to completely remove it or just pull it out of the way, out, out of the transmission and let it rest to the side. Not sure yet, or I'm gonna have to remove the whole CV joint. But I'll show you what I do. So I remove the bottom bolt and the top one I left it on there still because I'm working on the nut here. Um, this is a 32 millimeter. And they, these are 19 millimeter bolt, the nut and the head, the head of the bolt. So you know, they're pretty tight. Figure yourself a pipe that you can put on the ratchet, at the end of the ratchet. Same thing with this nut, super tight. I use the bar, place it on here. The breaker, the breaker bar, yeah, the breaker bar, and the pipe. And I put my weight on it and it, and it came off. It's nice and loose now. I'm gonna finish taking it off. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Extremely tight. In some cases, you have to put the wheel back on, take the center of the rim out, put the wheel back on, lower the car, and then you can insert the tool through the rim. Another thing you can do is have a second person step on the brake inside the car, and that will stop this from turning. At this point, that would be the easiest thing instead of using the bar. All right, this is how we are currently. The, the CV joint is out from in there. In order for you to get this spindle in this position, you gotta take the locking tab, this locking device or tab that goes in here and hold this part of the brake line there. Take it off and then push the brake line fitting through the tab and then slide it out to the side. And here we got the speed sensor, the wheel speed sensor. Release it from here. This is just regular grommets. Push it to the side, pop it out. And that gives you enough so that you have, you're able to pull 
the spindle and this, you know, forward towards you so you can have enough room to pop the CV joint out. Very simple, guys. Um, the CV joint does get rusty inside the spindle. So you have to, while you're pushing it in, taking the nut off, obviously it's, it's loose and it's coming out. What you want to do is hit on the nut with the hammer to that pushes the CV joint in, right, out of here. So you hit it, you hit it, you loosen up the nut more, hit it, loosen up the nut, loosen up the nut more and hit the nut. That way you don't damage the threads. Or if you take the nut off, then you need to use something, maybe a, a chisel or anything that you can use to hit the center of the shaft, a shaft, center of the shaft. So you don't damage the threads. You don't want to hit the threads. You want to hit the center and then push it up. Once we're here, now all I got to do is release that part of the CB joint out of the transmission with a pry bar. I'm going to pop it out of the transmission and then that should be out of the way. All right, fellas. So I'm underneath the car and um, I'm trying to get the other part of the CB joint from the transmission and in order to get it out guys what I use is like a bar like this or a chisel it has to be a long one right and you just stick it behind it behind that part and then hit this in with the hammer kind of to pry it you should pry it just like this and it started coming out it was it was not coming out by hand so I needed to use either a bar uh, chisel anything that fits underneath the car and gives you enough if you might have to jack the car up a little more if you need room but once you pop it out with the bar have a container ready because it starts leaking oil now i'm getting ready to just pull it out here it is it's popped out of the tranny and it's leaking a lot of oil made a little bit of a mess i thought that wasn't going to come out that much As you can see, it's coming out plenty. Maybe because the car is jacked up even on both sides. If the car was maybe jacked up from this side and lower to the other side, then maybe it wouldn't have leaked so much. But anyway, if you have a setup like mine, yeah, expect that. And I love this little guy. So I started taking the, the other side off, the right side. I got these bolts loose. Guys, I mentioned these were 19, they're not 19. I don't know what I was thinking. They're 21 millimeter. The head of the bolt and the knot, 21 millimeter. Um, but then this knot on this side, for some reason, is not 32 millimeter like the other side. It's bigger. So I gotta go to the auto parts store and get a bigger socket. Um, and then while I'm here, check this out this part this is a sway bar link it's supposed to be attached to that and it's just hanging there so that, <laughs> that's another thing i gotta replace anyway guys just to let you know an update i'm headed to the store now and just like that we're back we got the right socket i went to our local harbor freight 35 millimeter it's this nut got this kit cost me about 60 dollars because with a whole bunch of sockets for this. So that way I don't have to struggle anymore. Let's get it. We're back. The axle's out of the spindle. But before I do it on this side, see that bolt right there and that bolt right there? I think it's two. You gotta remove that. And that will that will allow me to remove the steer axle, the CB joint, keep on saying steer axle. CV joint. It's um, I, I guess it's a retainer for the seal, maybe a protector. Not sure, but that has to come off. 12 millimeter heads. So I'm gonna get that off and I'll remove the axle. Okay, got it out, guys. So this plate, the one I was showing you before that has the two bolts, they're not 12 millimeter, they're 13. Very tight for some reason, I guess. That's because obviously it's retaining uh, steer axle again with the steer axle CB joint. 
It's holding that bearing in. In the hole. Right? So the steer axle goes all the way to the tranny in the second hole, but it sits there and the bearing comes right out. So you do have to, for, I was trying for, for a minute, I was trying, trying to pry it here because I had one bolt out and the other one was not coming out, it was so tight. Um, and then I noticed that it just, this wasn't budging. So I ended up just removing this bolt, got underneath it and grabbed a 13 millimeter ratchet, ratchet wrench like this and st stuck my hand right through a hole underneath and the, the other arm through here and with both i just i was just yanked on it eventually got it out so yeah that has to come out 13 millimeter heads and then it pops out huge like that it falls right out after that it's big bigger than the other one so they're out the guys process, i'm underneath the tranny and right here I gotta remove this cover. Got a plastic cover or steel cover? Steel. It has two 10 millimeter heads, I think, bolts. And I gotta remove that to have access to the torque converter bolts. All right, I got the cover out. And there it is, fellas. There's the bolt. There's the bolt for the torque converter. Well, it's gonna have maybe six. There's one of them. And the way you, well, once you Remove that bolt. The way you move the engine is with a ratchet in the front of the engine. Ratchet in the socket on the bolt of the crankshaft pulley or the, what's it called? The harmonic balancer. And look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and move this and you're gonna see that move. See how it moves? There you go. So once I remove that bolt, I'm gonna have to continue moving to the next one, just like this. It's gonna wanna fight you because of the compression of the engine. Once you have it lined up, then you remove the bolt. Uh, I don't know what size, I think it's 13 millimeter. I don't know if a ratchet wrench like this is gonna work or an actual socket with a ratchet. But anyway, I have to remove them bolts. I'll let you know what worked better. All right, guys. Some bolts are so tight that this is what I what I ended up doing. So I got the ratchet up there, put a pipe on the ratchet. I hold it with my knee, and then I got the ratchet on here with the socket. It's a 14 millimeter, and some of them come out with just by using my hands, but others like gotta use leverage. So I use leverage here. Leverage over there. This one wasn't that bad, but if you have to do it, at least you got some idea now. Once you get it loose, you can use your hand. Around. They don't really fight you once, once you get them loose, once they break loose. Use your hands to come right out. Short, short little bolts. Nothing to it, guys. Easy. That's four. I think it's only four, not six. But now I gotta check. I gotta turn the engine and look till I get an empty space again. Turn the engine clockwise, by the way. counterclockwise it doesn't matter i don't feel like you're forcing anything that's different but there it is there's an empty space so that means that means we're good four bolts guys 
Now you can remove the ratchet. Don't forget it. Remove the ratchet from the front of the engine. And that's it. Now the next step, we're gonna go. This is this is this is it for the bottom, I think. Now we're gonna go on the top and start removing the plastic trims and all the electrical connected to the transmission and whatever vacuum lines or water hoses or water lines we got to remove i think the battery has to come out first let's do it okay like i was saying now we're going to work on the top i think the battery has to come out obviously the air filter housings part of stuff going into the throttle body has to come out so anything that's here on top of the tranny has to come out so let's start with the battery and work our way through all right took the battery holder out of the way 10 millimeter bolts along with another piece that goes on here which is this one this one has a bolt and goes right in here flip it over and remove that bolt and it comes right out by the way, if you guys don't have trays like this, magnetic trays, get yourself some because they come in handy, man. They hold wrenches, they hold any bolt, and they're magnetic to the car, so they don't they don't just fly off. You know, they stay pretty much put. Okay, I got another one underneath holding the other bolt. Right there's a little one. So this is ready to come out, and this stuff I don't see any retainers. Oh yeah, so I usually would hook. You have to undo this bolt and this one. Mines are loose already. I can actually remove it. Comes right out. As you can see, guys, just by removing that, you can you can see more of the tranny. I'm gonna remove this box, the battery, and possibly the, the computer. This is your transmission computer. And this is your engine computer. All right, All right guys. So the battery's out. I don't know if I show you. And you have to remove the the air filter box, right? So it goes here. The air filter. The air filter's inside. This thing sits like this. Unclip it. Comes out. Remove it. All right and remove the mass airflow sensor pull on the hose which is this one you have to squeeze this clamp pull it out um this thing has one bolt here and that bracket right there it has that grommet and another grommet right there that's for that pin and that pin so it sits once you remove the bolt and you undo the hose clamps and remove the hose you gotta just pop it pop it up and it comes right out and now you can see more of the transmission now let's work on this unplug it and unbolt it and remove it i remove the battery tray part of it this comes right off and the hooks just gotta unhook the these two guys from one goes right there the other one goes right there unhook it place it on the tray remove the tray now you see more of the bolts that we probably gotta remove so we gotta remove probably Whatever bolts are holding this, all the tray. And um, yeah, whatever's going on here with the computer. Okay, if you get to this point, this is how you release uh, the plugs on the computer. This gotta be pushed in as you pry on this other piece, this piece. This gotta go up and this gotta be, this locks it in place. So you gotta push this in and move it up, I'll show you. Right. Wow. Oh, how do 
gonna do this. All right. I'm gonna release it and then I'll show you. Okay. See? This is the tab. That tab right there. Okay. So push on here. And as you're pushing this in, you pry this up. And that's how it starts. Once you bring it all the way up, the plug releases. All right? Simple. So you got to do that to all of them. All three of them. Guys, the computer is free. It has one, two, three, four bolts. You have to release the harness from that tab, which is that plastic piece right there. And another bolt back here. This is a 10 millimeter head. These are all 13 right there. Okay. Now I took this, this um, harness out of here, but I don't think I needed to do that. I think I'm gonna put it back in. But yeah, there you got this pull on the tab and open them up. Easy. So now I'm gonna work on this tray. See, when you have it like this, now you can manipulate the harness. Now you can move it out of the way without and, and put a bungee cord or something on it. Put the computer out of the way. You're good. All right, fellas, the tray, the actual tray, the bottom tray, 13, milli 13 millimeter bolts. I had one here, I had one here, one here, and one here. Yeah. These are the ones for the computer, like I was showing you earlier. Oh yeah, this is, this is another one you gotta take off, yeah. So one here in the corner, one here. One, two, three, and four. And then this thing, this plug right here, goes for the negative, for the battery. It was attached here. Uh huh. So you gotta, you got one of these to come in handy, man. These hooks get underneath the plastic piece, which is that's a tab right in the center, and you pull on it, and then you're able to once you pull on it and push up, it's released. You just gotta get it out of the way. You gotta work the tray from underneath that plug. It'll come right out. All right, fellas, now the next step is we have to somehow manipulate this so it's out of the way. Right? It opens up the, the space like this. But this tray has to come off too. I was underneath the battery tray. And I think those bolts right there are gonna be the ones that are gonna allow me to remove this bracket. I'm sure there's another one down here somewhere. Plus, that piece right there is part of the harness has another bolt underneath there underneath there somewhere that's gonna allow me to manipulate this out of the way separate this from this so that's gonna be working on I next. The, I got the bracket loose I had to remove the bolts for the bracket they are 13 millimeter heads and one on this side one on this side because I was gonna remove it anyway, but I was trying to get to those two bolts that releases, well, that separates these two parts. And I got one out, but then this one, man, it was difficult. Not enough room for a ratchet or um, this on an angle, it still wasn't enough. So I was able to remove the bolts and now I can manipulate better and work on that bolt. Now I can fit the ratchet with the socket, 10 millimeter. And it's out, and this is how it looks. So it's working on those two bolts, very difficult. Here's one bolt that hold it, holds the tray, well, the, this bracket to the car. One there, one there. That's how it's looking. Now we can kind of move this stuff out of the way, see how it opens up the, tranny, the, the space for the transmission to come out. We're getting there, guys. All right, well, the next step would be, I can start taking the harness off. For example, that plug right there and anything 
attach any electrical attached to the to the transmission like that plug right there this one right here get that out of the way and or this i can take this off first because the transmission has to come out this way which we're going to remove this that's going to be one of the last parts we're going to remove this is the transmission mount but this definitely it's taking up some room along with this i gotta take this off but i think it's a few bolts of brackets and lay that over somewhere tuck it into somewhere this part i thought it was just gonna be like the, the housing for the thermostat but it has a whole bunch of holes that's attached to it so i gotta see what is the best way and then it has this pipe comes along right there and it goes on the side of the engine i gotta figure out how that comes off I think it has a bolt down there somewhere. See that bolt right there? Behind that, behind that plug, there's a bolt. So that bolt holds that pipe in place along with that other bolt right there. I don't know, I gotta figure it out, but that's what's next. You're gonna lose some coolant, so let's drain some of the cooling out and start removing some of this stuff. Okay, so like I was saying, I started working on all the hoses and that tube. I removed the bolt underneath and I moved the tube out. So this om it's almost out. I removed the bolt that held it here and I removed all the hoses that went on the tube and part of the hoses going on the thermostat housing. I was all draining. So they're ready to make a mess, as you can see. Next, I'm gonna remove this tube completely, but I'm waiting for this to drain underneath the car with where the pan is. Then I'm gonna, this thing comes right out. You gotta just wiggle it, just wiggle it. You know, wiggle it back and forth as you're applying pressure, pulling it out. And it comes right out. Um, 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter. I bolt this underneath, like I was showing you earlier. So I'm gonna start working on the electrical plug. I started removing that one. That one, you on, you turn and it comes out. Turn and pull and it comes out. Then you got another one here. Squeeze and pull. Um, the starter bolts, the starter connections, signal wire and battery connection. It's gonna be like a 12, the big one. And the little one, I think it's gonna be a 10. And this is the transmission. Um, this is the set. This is the. I don't know what it's called, but this one tells tells the computer um, when they when you move the shifter, this moves. So it lets the computer know the plus the dash when you take it out of park and you put it in reverse to drive and gear. And so I'm gonna remove that plug, and eventually I think I'm gonna remove the shifter cable. I don't know if from the bracket from this nut and the two bolts with the bracket yeah probably that's what i'm gonna do but while that's draining i'm gonna be working on the harness okay i got the starter battery cable off this is a 12 and this is an 8 so i thought it was a 10 it's an 8 and it's a 12. so that's off the harness coming along very well just gotta get this one out all right so i was having a problem with this plug right here so I ended up moving on to the to the bracket with the steering with the shifter cable, and so I ended up so I ended up removing the two bolts. Those are 12 millimeter, and this is 13 millimeter, and then the little breather hose, which is right here, it comes with the bracket. It stays with the bracket. Just got to remove it from here, and then I don't know, tuck it out of the way back here somewhere. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way. And it's time to remove the tranny. Now I'm gonna work on this plug. It's usually a squeeze and pull, but I couldn't squeeze it enough. These things get hard and brittle and you just gotta be careful. All right, got it out guys. Squeeze and pull. And um, I can pull the harness completely out of the way.
bring it around here somewhere and just tuck it away. Be very careful not to damage it, but you can tuck it out of the way. Hopefully you get the idea. Now what else? Now I'm gonna work in that tube, finish removing the tube. Okay, so before I remove the tool, the tube, um, so this plug right here gets gets attached to this bracket. You gotta remove that. In my case, in my case, it was halfway out. This transmission's been replaced before, not by me, but so they probably didn't put it back right or they broke the the tab. Yeah, so it slides right in here and it locks in place. And then another thing that I remove is right there the harness gets attached to the tool gotta squeeze and, and remove that clip and then i'm able to remove the tube okay the tube is out it seals with a nice o-ring so you know um so i tuck it back along with the cable with the shifter cable and hopefully that's out of the way here's the harness that i removed from the tube along with this plug and the mess that it made so we're we're getting there guys we're getting there now the transmission has two cooling lines I mean, this is the, I need to start I showed you this so these those two lines you gotta um, either unbolt them it has two fittings you can see one here and one over there two bolts you can unbolt it from there that's pretty easy I think those are 19 millimeter and then after that, this transmission is getting, is, is ready. Yeah, I guess we gotta work on the, all the bolts that surround the transmission. And the mount, transmission mount. Obviously you gotta support the transmission, support the engine before you start doing any of that. But that's gonna be the next step, guys. I'm gonna start removing those bolts that surround the transmission. I think those are, what size are those? They look bigger than 19, maybe 22 millimeter. And we'll take it from there. Oh, I almost forgot, yeah, you gotta, I removed the tube and I removed all the fittings going to this, but you have to take the thermostat housing off. Um, so let's get that done. I think these are 12 or 13. Got one, two, three, four. So you got four bolts. And this hose, I already removed it from the top, so that should be good. This is removed, so. All right, let's get that done. Okay, it's out. It has two studs and two bolts. 12 millimeter heads on all, on all four of them. And the thermostat comes right out with it. What are you doing? What are you doing? thermostat stays in there just be careful it might drop who knows because it, it actually goes in, inside the engine and it seals with that and the housing holds it in place so it might it might come off on you so be careful with that go away go away go away go away Tito I'm smelling my parts come on Tito all right guys another thing that I forgot to mention that I noticed there's a ground wire right there Gotta remove that. And back here is another plug to a sensor. You have to unplug that, okay? I'm gonna try to unplug it. If not, I'm gonna take the sensor right out. I'll let you know. Okay, got that ground cable off. Right there. I laid it to the side with the bolt still in place so I don't forget it. That is a my 16 millimeter head along with I just found out that the one that goes here is 16 millimeter while these are a bigger size those are 18 millimeter these are 18 this, this one is 16 the one for the ground is 16 so I got the two lines removed the cooling lines removed there's one there's the other they use uh, 19 millimeter heads, banjo bolts, and one of them has a bracket that you have to take a 10 millimeter bolt out, which is the one further towards the engine. 
this one has a bracket. So once you take that off, then you're completely free. You're completely free from the tranny as far as that goes. Now I'm gonna start working on the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine and then the mount. But I think this is gonna be for tomorrow because I'm tired and I don't need to finish this today. So I'll come back to this in a little bit, which a little bit for you guys, <laughs> the next day for me. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm underneath the car and I'm removing the bolts that are holding the transmission to the engine. Um, in the bottom, I think I removed these yesterday. 16 millimeter heads and there's another one coming up 16 and then on top there's gonna be an 18 millimeter and the rest are 16 millimeter so all the way up and around and underneath i'm gonna go by the front there's another one here i gotta get 16 millimeter head and then i think the starter bolt I gotta remove. I know there's another one there, and there's another one on top. So let's get I'm on the top now, and I just finished removing one of the starter bolts. The long one it goes right, right there. It's the long one. So you you have to remove the top one, but you don't have to remove the bottom one. But there is a bolt underneath the starter. It's a 18 millimeter head, but it's not the starter bolt. So on the side of the transmission, on this side, just look for it. It's gonna be a little difficult, but it's right. It's gonna be difficult, but it's underneath the starter. But it's not the starter bolt. Only the top one you have to remove. Okay, so now I've still got one here. But I think I got all of them. Now, before I do anything, I have to at least put a jack underneath Actually, no, I don't have to. I don't have to do it. I have to just work on this and that bolt will hold the transmission in place. Plus it has, it has um, dowels that still hold the transmission in place. So what I need to do is support the engine for sure. Put a jack underneath the engine with a, a piece of um, wood or something so you don't damage the pan. But that's next. Support the engine and remove that. Okay, next step. Take the nut off. I have the engine supported with a jack and a block of wood so that way it doesn't fall. So now, since that nut is out, I'm going to remove the four bolts that are holding the, the whole mount. Yes, I think it's four bolts. Let me get that out of the way and i think we're ready we're, we're closer i think this, this bracket also has to be removed i'm not sure we'll see okay guys the mount is out four bolts of 16 millimeter head the nut is 18 millimeter that's how it looks the whole engine and transmission shifted just a little bit when i did this so you know be careful look out for that it's gonna move on you a little bit all right i think this transmission is ready there's plenty of room but i i almost want to remove that mount what do you guys think one two three three bolts I don't know, we'll see. Because I know some of the torque converters on these transmissions do get stuck, but if it gets stuck, then that limits the space. Oh, and I think these studs gotta come out too, because on the way up, I need all the room I can get. I gotta get the special sockets for these. Yeah, it might, might not be today then. I gotta get those sockets and it's late. But, um, all right stay tuned okay so i gotta remove this i think i'm gonna remove it so that i have enough room because i have room right now but like i said i might have to take these studs out not sure yet but i need the transmission to move at least past that right we're close to it at least it has to pass this corner of the head of the engine see how it's underneath the transmission is right underneath that 
So in order to remove this, I loosen up the bottom bolt, the one, the bolt in the back, and it has three bolts and the bolt in the front. When I went to remove this one, I didn't have enough room. So you have to definitely loosen this one up and this one up so that you and, and take the bottom one out completely. So now when you take the bolt out, even though it hits, it doesn't have enough room and it hits the side of the car, it does have enough room for you to swing it down and take it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the one in the back and I'm basically gonna take everything out. So remember that guys, you have to take the one in the bottom out, loosen the one in the back in order to be able to swing, take that this one out and bring it down like I did. And it comes right out. And it's out, easy. So you can see now I've got plenty of room. Look at all that space I got now. The bolts are all the same size, 16 millimeter head um in the same length now we're gonna see what's next the starter guys is optional you can take the starter out if you want and the dipstick i think i'm gonna do that might not need to but you can if you want to it's optional i don't know about the studs but why not take them out right if i got the tool to do it now i should try it maybe well, let me try it. That way you guys know for sure if you have to take it out or not. Okay, guys, this is how I got it rigged. I got that last bolt that was there out. Right in the corner. And I already started jacking on it. And it's starting to split. So once you find a spot, gotta pry it with a screwdriver or a bar. You can see, look. Just split. Just work it, take your time. Go underneath, pry some more. I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna pry a little bit and then pry on the top till I get it to be separated. And then I'll show you guys what I got. Alright guys, I went and pry underneath and pry on the top a little bit again and it just came off. As you can tell, as you can see, I think the torque converter, which is this part, is gonna get stay stuck. That's a common thing with these transmission. The torque converter is so tight onto the flex plate or the flywheel, whatever you want to call it. But it doesn't want to come off. Wait, hold on. That's not it. That's still the flex plate. I'm wrong. Let me um let me continue removing it. I'll show you guys if it got stuck or not. Alright fellas. The transmission is pretty much free. It was a tight fit. The torque converter did come out. It was causing chaos, so I had to push it back in and struggle with that while taking it out. Um, I ended up jacking the engine up a little bit. I ended up removing the 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 hood strut. I mean the hood. Um, what you call it? The stick that holds the the hood up. I removed it from here and I put it back here so they would open the hood, so I could, so it would clear the hoist. So it opens it up a little bit more when you do that. All right, it's right there in that hole. I'm sure you can put it in this hole if you want to. But it goes right here. I didn't have to take the studs out. You can remove them. It would make a, the job a little easier. You don't have to, it's optional. If you need a bar, so you can work it through it. Now remember, you got electrical plugs and wires and hoses that wanna fall. So you have to take your time. Another thing that I did was, for me, moving this thing around, the jack stand where I put it was about to just slip from underneath, so I ended up adding another jack. And obviously you got oil coming down, so be careful for that. Pay attention for that. And just take your time. Be very careful. You might have to adjust the jack as it's going up. It wants to pull it towards the front of the car, so you might want to maybe push the, the hoist in a little bit. Watch out for hoses like this. They want to get stuck. You don't want to rip anything off. You have the master cylinder right there, so be careful for that. But as you can see, it's out. We finished taking it out, and I'll, we'll, we'll touch base on what else I can give you tips on. 
All right, fellas, let's recap. Transmission is out. During the process of removing the transmission, I noticed that if you don't have it flat, even, so that it comes out nice and straight, um, you're gonna have problems, right? You're gonna have problems because it has to come out and it has to go back as far as if it can. Mine ended up scraping a lot because the torque converter was stuck here. So I was trying to move it as far as I could and bring it up. So it was difficult because of that. Um, once I re-rigged it. So I had originally, I had this one. And I ended up adding another one. So I thought maybe with two, it, was, it would be more, more level. Um, and that wasn't the case. So I ended up removing this one and left this one on and that helped it a lot so try to get it as level as you can when you're ready to remove it if you're using straps like this be careful make sure they're in good shape um careful with sharp edges see that one doesn't look right but it worked because this allow it to so it stayed and slip off but um maybe you can break it better than i did I didn't notice that till it was all the way up in the air, so it was too late. Um, when it's coming out, if you can remove these, go ahead and remove it. It'll make life easier. If you can somehow remove the, the harness out of the way, because it was kind of hitting here, so I was pushing it all the way as far as I could back here. If you can loosen the brackets for the harness and bring, bring the harness over, that would be great. These hoses kind of or falling, getting in the way, pinching it, getting it stuck. So secure this better than I did. So the harness, that, secure that. These were getting all tangled up. If you can somehow make it better than what I did, that would help you. Um, what else? This bracket, this bracket was kind of a pain in the ass too. It looks like it has two bolts. I should have taken it off. That's um, that's for the air filter box. Those are 10 millimeter. I'm gonna remove that before I put the new one in. Those are 10 millimeter heads. And it should come right out. Um, like I was saying guys, the starter and the dipstick, you can remove if you want to. You don't have to, as you can see. Still on there but if you're gonna send the transmission out to get rebuilt i would remove the starter just to make sure you get the starter back i don't know and who knows what they they might drop it on you or whatever if they remove it just take it out put it away and then you know it's safe have a pan to catch the oil because the oil is gonna come it's gonna, it's gonna start coming out of the where the cb joints go in here and here And out of the torque converter too. Because once it pulls out, it breaks the seal and it oil starts coming down. So that's it, fellas. You got tools and you got a, a hoist like this and you want to make this happen. It's doable. This is an 08 Nissan Maxima. No. Altima. 08 Nissan Altima. It's doable. It's a four-cylinder. I don't know. I don't know about an eight, uh, my six-cylinder. But a four-cylinder... No problem. Got plenty of space to take it out. Going from underneath is a little more difficult and you need, I think it's, you need a, a hoist for that. So if this video helped you in any way, please like, subscribe, it's free. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. Ask me any question that you want. I try to make it as detailed as I could, um, but maybe I missed something. So watch the full video and let me know. Let me know if, um, if you have any questions. Hopefully this video helps you and save you some money. Um, till next time, thank you for watching.